Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to see is some more generative AI capabilities and in this case we're going to talk about plugins and more specifically Azure OpenAI functions that we can go ahead and call a logic app as a plugin. So let's go ahead let's dive right in. So this was initially going to be a three-part series and I've decided to extend it and make it four parts instead and part of the reason for that is that we have semantic kernel and we have some upcoming updates that should be rolling out here shortly that will simplify our semantic kernel experience and more specifically that's related to easy auth i know some people have been asking about hey are we going to have a user experience for easy auth and the answer is yes and it should be out soon hence i'm going to defer that video and it shouldn't be too long but in the meantime i wanted to talk about plugins because I think they're pretty important. So we'll focus on Azure OpenAI assistance and plugins uh, at this point in time. Okay, Logic Apps as plugins. So let's start off with what is a generative AI plugin. So we've talked about large language models in part two. If you didn't see that video, su suggest that you go ahead and, and check that out because this will make more sense for you. But what we've seen is that large language models, LLMs, excel at analyzing large data sets to identify patterns, trends, and even make predictions. So as a result, they're good at providing recommendations. They are also excel at summarizing, understanding sentiment, and adjusting tone. They are able to extract entities. They are pretty good at generating content, like images that uh, you've seen. Uh, in my videos, like the cover screen for the thumbnail on LinkedIn, and also FAQ, frequently asked question, chat experiences. However, LLMs can leave the last mile of automation unfulfilled. Now, what do I mean by that? So, for example, you can ask an LLM, hey, how do I go ahead and accomplish a specific task? And it might enumerate a series of actions that you should perform. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. Step three, do something else. So all it's really done in that case is it's assigned you homework. Now, don't get me wrong. If you didn't know what you needed to do, there's value there. But there's still this opportunity to further improve productivity through automation. I would say the other piece that is important is accessing real-time information. So if we take a look at video number two and we talk about power outages and it's a customer service use case. Now in that particular use case, I only published completed work orders to the LLM when they were complete. And so what that left is this gap about what are say open cases or open tickets that are currently you know haven't been completed how do you go ahead and access that information and that's not probably a situation where you'd want to store all of that information in your llm uh, i think you want to make sure that your the data in your llm is very valuable and is probably not sort of shifting or transient uh, i think when you think about a work order status that is something that does change you go through a variety of different statuses or stages and at one point you're complete and that's probably the best time to go ahead and publish that to the LLM, just generally speaking. In terms of how do we deal with real-time access, Logic Apps is particularly well suited to solve that problem. And in part, this is due to our low code composability, but also our large connector library. So what we're gonna see in this demo here shortly is, I wanna be able to go ahead and query the CRM to find what are my open tickets that do exist. And I can do that through a chat experience. And that's where this plugin comes into place. We're gonna go and be in the Azure OpenAI Assistant. We're going to be able to query an LLM. However, it's not gonna have the information that we're looking for. And then as a result, what it can do is delegate to a Logic App to go fetch that particular details. So here's another view of what I was trying to explain to you before is that you've got your data in your LLM. Maybe you're using Azure OpenAI already and AI search like we saw in demo number two. But what about accessing real-time information or being able to complete real-time information, complete transactions? 
That's where Logic Apps in exposing it as an HTTP trigger would allow it to be used as a plugin that you can then subsequently use these connectors downstream to connect to our line of business systems like our SAP, our Dynamics, our Salesforce, etc. And that is really the opportunity here from a Logic Apps perspective. Now, what you're going to see in the demo is Azure OpenAI Service Assistance. And if you haven't heard of this service before, this, this capability, it is a, a low code-ish way of building conversational experiences. And this allows a developer to build an agent-like feature into their application. Now you can leverage the latest ChatGPT or GPT models, tools and knowledge, and you can go ahead and create stateful co-pilots grounded in enterprise data. So what I mean by this, is you can take data sources and basically ingest them into your LLM. And this chat experience can leverage that same data. And then it's the opportunity to enrich that enterprise data with real-time data using functions. And that's what we see here on the screen. Now functions can be authored using custom code or Logic Apps workflows. And just to make sure we're not overloading a term here, Functions, or the custom code in this case, or functions in this case, are not Azure functions. This is just custom code, so think of it in a more generic sense. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, when you do use Logic Apps, now you're unlocking transactional data access across more than a thousand different systems in the enterprise. Now, one thing I will call out here is these Logic Apps that are available to be called, these are consumption-based logic apps. And they also have an HTTP trigger that allows you to go ahead and call that endpoint. So this is one of those prerequisites uh, that you need to be able to think about. All right, so here we've got a demo. This is pre-recorded, but I'm in the Azure OpenAI Studio service, and I've got a deployment of a particular model. In this case, it's a, a G, GPT 3.5 version and I've got a deployment that I had previously created. So I'm going to go ahead and give my assistant a name. And at this point, we're going to be looking at customer support queries and I'm an internal user of this system. And so this tool is going to help me with just inquiries about our customer service experience. Now, what I'm going to do here today is just to ask like a general question. Uh, at this point, we're not reaching out to the plugin. We haven't configured that yet. But I'm just going to ask, what are some best practices to avoid power outages? And this is just going to give me some information based upon like the general purpose model that we are actually using. As I mentioned before, you can add files that will allow you to ingest corporate data that will help you with um, your own enterprise data sets. Now what I'm going to do is I want to be able to access some real-time data. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function. Now, this is where I could write some code, but because I've got logic apps, I'm going to go ahead and use that low code experience instead. And in this case, I'm going to call a consumption based logic app that's going to get me active tickets. So I can go ahead and save this and now I can go ahead and try it out immediately. And so I can say, you know, walk up to the chatbot and said hi, and then it's going to ask how it can help me. And then I'm going to say, do we have any active tickets? in a particular city, in this case, Kirkland, Washington. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually invoke that workflow and it's going to say, yes, we do have some active power outage tickets in Kirkland and here's a particular case, case number. Now I'm gonna ask for more information. Now, you know, the, in the LLM, it's not gonna make something up in this case. It's gonna say, um, you know, I don't have a lot of details about this particular case because it's in an open status. Now, I didn't tell it what all of these statuses were. Um, it was just basically able to infer that. But, um, but yeah, this just goes to show you it's not going to go make up a bunch of random data if it doesn't have access to that data. So I think that's encouraging. Now, here I've got that workflow that I, that I call from the experience. And I've got an HTTP endpoint that's exposed. And I just have a very simple 
payload. It's a schema that has a, a field called location and I pass in a city. And I need to do that so that um, the chat experience can basically inspect and interrogate our schema. Here you can see the execution that took place and we've got one particular case that is open. Now, what I can also do here is if I wanted to create like a client application that an end user would use, I can go ahead and get started by using this sample code, copy and paste it into my application. I've got an API key there as well that would authenticate me. And then I would be able to go ahead and take advantage of this chat experience. So that's a quick demo, but um, that is something that uh, is pretty cool in my opinion, and definitely another way to extend your use cases. Now I'm going to leave this link in the chat or in the description of this video. And this is the uh, documentation for the Azure OpenAI service. What they've done is they've put together a walkthrough that you can go ahead and leverage in order to go ahead and implement this. All right, that concludes another episode. As I mentioned earlier, we will in talk about Semantic Kernel and how Semantic Kernel can also call Logic Apps as a plugin as well to drive more last mile automation using that platform too. So we'll catch you later. Thanks again.